So welcome to our review of Q2 and Q3 of 2022 of the Unicon uPortal open source support uh, practice. We have a lot of things to share with you. Um, so we've already waited a few minutes. Let's get started. So our, our agenda today is going to be a review of the Unicon program. Um, that's interesting for subscribers, but of course we want to also make it worthwhile for just anyone in the community to join this call. So we'll continue and go on to our second section, which will cover the uPortal ecosystem, what's been changing in the last uh, six months. Then we'll go into the uPortal steering committee update, um, where uh, Laura will go ahead and, and share with uh, everyone on the call what's been going on there in that uh, group. Then we'll drop into community events, talk about what's the latest going on. Um, we have uh, something hopefully uh, worthwhile to share with you there as well. And then we'll wrap up with me just touching on uh, lit web components, um, what we're going to do with them, what they are, what we're going to do with them. So here we go. So one of the exciting things about uh, our practice right now is the ePortal team has grown from just uh, Chris Beach and myself to now include Laura Fernandez Moran and Michael Killian. Um, some of you may know Laura, uh, but I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Laura Moran, um, and I've worked with uPortal since probably about 2008. Um, I was the documentation coordinator back then. Um, my previous name was McCord before I got married. So if you stumble into some old documentation that was last edited by Laura McCord, that would be me. <laughs> Um, so I've, I've been involved in the project for several years and have served on the Aperio board for a little bit, uh, as well as other uh, committees, conference committees, and the uPortal steering committee. So I've been in higher ed for about 20 years now as a software engineer and also as a project manager. So um, I'm glad to have joined Unicon uh back in june so and i'm um, now more involved in the uPortal project so hi everyone <laughs> and we also have uh michael on the call uh, michael do you want to introduce yourself real quick sure um michael gillian i've been with unicon since 2011. uh i was not actively doing development for uPortal for a number of years. Uh, I think I did some work probably about 10 years ago and then kind of dropped off the dropped off the radar as I was working on other Unicon projects. Uh, here in the last uh, six months, year or so, I rejoined the uPortal team and am uh, a backend developer uh, trying to <laughs> trying to digest all of the changes that have that have been uh, added to uPortal since uh, I was last year. Uh, my my background is primarily in systems integration. Uh, I've worked in multiple industries uh, before uh, before higher ed, but uh, now ten years or so uh, <laughs> to supporting Unicon and and various colleges and universities and and uh, vendors across the country. Awesome, thanks. Yep, we're excited to have them on the team. Um, starting to really uh, get some uh, some of our older tickets knocked out and uh, the roadmap moving forward. We'll cover that here in just a minute. Um, so speaking about contributions, I want to thank uh, Julian and Jonathan for their active participation in the uPortal community. While they're not part of the Unicon team, they're certainly um, strong contributors. And uh, you, know, you can see that the other six contributors are all Unicon, which is great for, for for our company, but we really care more about this as an open source project. We don't want this to get confused um, as some kind of Unicon project that just has an open source flavor of a product out there. This really is about uh, an open source project that originated you know, two decades ago, and we just are passionate about it and want to continue helping out. And this program does quite a bit to help, um, but we certainly want to highlight 
others who are contributing. So thank you both and glad you're both on the call. Just an update on some numbers. We have 18 subscribers. We picked up two earlier this year. So that's been fantastic in regards to uh, the ability to then uh, invest further into U Portal. Um, we've been really busy this year uh, with some of the additional projects as we continue to have those come in. Um, but we, we certainly are tracking our hours and ready to continue moving the roadmap forward. And that's kind of our big focus for the next uh, three to three to four months is um, taking that time we've kind of accumulated and digging in. Uh, but it's really thanks to the 18 subscribers we have in this program that um, help us have that time to be able to invest in the project. And then one last big number is 43, and that's how many Zendesk tickets we've had come in. They usually start as a support assistants. Sometimes they go directly to consulting assistants. Um, you know, just a refresher, support assistants, unlimited, um, as long as you're a, a subscriber. If you have some basic questions or want us to investigate if something's a bug, that's stuff that comes in as a support assistants and there's unlimited time or hours for that. Consulting assistants are efforts where you want us to dig into your server or do some piece of work like fix a bug or throw in a feature. That's usually about 20 hours um, per subscriber per year. Um, and uh, it, we can get quite a bit done in those 20 hours. So uh, we have a couple of those tickets. Uh, I think we're caught up on almost all of them that uh, came in um, earlier this year and, and before. So we're doing great progress there. Uh, this compares well to the previous six months where we had 42 tickets. So it seems like we have some consistency there and that's always nice. And then the last slide in this section is that um, this is focused on the open source support program uh, for uPortal. Uh, but we can do other things, right? This is our sales pitch. Um, if you need to do an upgrade or you know uh, an institution that wants to do a fresh install, we certainly will be more than happy to assist with that. But with our experience, we're usually to facilitate that and speed that up uh, quickly. Um, and then if there's just some training or some additional work you need to do, like a new feature, you know, we're always available to um, look at those and engage in those kinds of projects. In particular around training, I've been trying to develop a few new courses. We certainly have a big like four day um, go from zero to 100 uh, in U portal training that's usually aligned with a new install or uh, a refresh when there's a completely new team involved with U portal. Um, but I'm also developing a few other uh, training offerings around the lines of specific technologies and, you know, things like uh, advanced security. So if you're interested, and of course we build custom training as well, if you're interested in any of those things, feel free to reach out. So let's go over the Uporta repos um, and what work has gone into in the last six months. Uh, this is just a reminder that um, this is starting to become old news and we probably won't have it in the next briefing. Uh, but for those of you who are new or haven't heard, uh, we've kind of reorganized the repos across um, the three new organizations. So JSIG was the one that uh, is the name of the old foundation that uPortal came from several years ago. Uh, you know, Aperio has been the main foundation for over seven years, I believe. So this is really uh, long in coming, but we finally decided, all right, let's let's just, just move repos around. Um, so at, at this point, we have uPortal project, which is where all the active uh, of official uh, Aperio Foundation projects go related to uPortal. Uh, we have the attic. Those are things um, th that include uh, scripts and other donations that may not have the buy-in yet in the community or are just getting off the ground. Um, so we would uh, host those in our uPortal um, contrib 
folder. Sometimes things don't evolve past that. I've written a couple of scripts for Tomcat and uPortal 4 that sit there because almost everybody is now in uPortal 5, and that's fine. It's still available. Um, but if something does become an officially adopted part of the uPortal ecosystem, it goes into uPortal project, and that's where you can find things that are actively being contributed to and developed um, by this group in particular. And if things uh, are no longer being used, um, we'll eventually migrate them into the uPortal attic. Uh, so they will generally be archived, but still available. If you find you you are using um, a product that's in uPortal attic and you need it to be worked on, you want it to be revived, there's no problem with doing that. Just start a conversation on the mailing lists and we'll, you know we can move that back. Uh, but if something's moved into the attic, it means we're not going to be actively uh, looking at it or worrying about any kind of security patches or anything. So if you get a chance, take a look at those um, and see if, if anything's in there that uh, you were not aware of. So the latest contribution there, um, well, Laura's going to go over that in the, in the slide here in just a minute, right? So uPortal 5.12.0 was released September 12th. Um, it's an important release because of the layout bug certain folks were having uh, with regards to specific versions of Java 8. So some versions of Java 8 would work uh, fine, and then a, another release of Java 8 would be uh, broken when it came to the layout, and then the next release would work fine, and then the subsequent release would be a problem. I don't know that it iterated exactly like on and off, on and off, but there were specific releases that just wouldn't work, and it had to do with the XST processor that's built in. We were looking at potentially migrating that as a fix to this issue that would break the layout, um, but Chris Beach found a, a quick workaround that injected the doc type, which is really the the culprit there is it wasn't being rendered sometimes. Um, so that's included in this 5.12.0 release. So if you've had any problems with layouts and your page looks kind of wonky um, with particular versions of Java 8, certainly look at 5.12.0 and adopting that quickly uh, to resolve that issue. Um, in this uh, screen cap, right, so there's the other fixes around CSRF. Um, and IDC around uh, multi-tenant URLs. Uh, those are important too, but not, not as impactful as, some of the, uh, as the doc type was. Uh, it's funny, it, it, was, it was a huge issue over the summer and it gets that one line fix, add workaround for a missing doc type. I kind of skipped the chores. Um, that list is really long and essentially captures uh, dependency updates and not much else. There was just, uh, two slides of that. So skipping all that, just jumping down here. One of the nice features is being able to see who contributed to uh, the latest release. And it's the usual suspects, right? The five of us. So uh, uPortal start updates. The interesting thing about uPortal start, we've had a debate, and I don't think we ever came to resol a resolution whether we should have releases for uPortal start. So essentially, that repo is just rolling commits, right? Um, if you're interested in reviving that conversation, feel free to do so on the mailing list. Uh, but here are the highlights of uh, commits that have happened in the last uh, six months. So uPortal was upgraded from uh, up to 5.12.0, the latest release. Uh, Tomcat was also upgraded to 8.5.53. I know we had one client who was looking at an older version, 8.5.52, um, and they opened a ticket saying, hey, does 53 work? And we said, yep, um, go ahead and upgrade. And, and they did. And uh, like a week later, uh, we patched it up to 8.5.53. Uh, Web Proxy Portlet was upgraded to 2.3.7. Uh, it was 2.3.4 before that. If you're unaware, Web Proxy Portlet um, did a lot of work through another engagement, not specifically through this particular practice, but one of those um, external engagements that we did uh, where they wanted to do a big upgrade from like uPortal 3 to the latest and some of the features in Web Proxy um, V1 had been dropped or broken. So we had to go through and make sure everything was working as they expected. Um, so now it's compatible with the feature sets of, of the, the 
earlier major release. Um, and there is a little a little patch as well, which I'll cover in, in the next slide. Um, so that's been upgraded and works much better now. Uh, another small one is that bookmarks had been uh, assigned the F name of P bookmarks instead of just bookmarks. That's been around for very you know, decades. And um, we finally went or got around to renaming it to something um, uh, that aligns more with expectations. So that's a small change. Uh, it mostly affects the quick start data set. Uh, but it might affect you as well, just to let you know. Um, Playwright was introduced. Um, Playwright is uh, a testing framework, more front end um, focused. So we are going to try to have uh, monitor new pull requests that they include uh, Playwright tests as needed to cover um, the fix or feature set. Uh, an update to the MariaDB doc. Um, about using the standard Hibernate dialect. We had a custom dialect uh, that was uPortal specific. Um, you don't necessarily need that anymore. I encourage you to read the documentation to see if you can switch back to the standard one. Uh, and kind of the last thing on this deck is that I created a new task called Tomcat config. So if you're familiar with how Tomcat is updated in uPortal um, previous to this, if you had made a change to the Etsy Tomcat conf server XML file, right? You either copied it out manually, um, potentially making a, a mistake, um, or you did a Tomcat install, which would pull in Tomcat again, um, delete the existing Tomcat directory, including any deployments you've you've done bring in Tomcat and then copy over the configuration files, which then would require you to subsequently do a Tomcat deploy, uh, all just to update you know, a configuration file or two. So now there's this Tomcat config task. You can run that and it just simply takes the files in your Etsy Tomcat directory and copies them over into the, the Tomcat um, directory as needed. Right. So just a little bit of sugar there. And then the last thing in the section is, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Web Proxy 237. We just had a small fix where we have some substitution that uses curly braces. Um, if it's not substituted, if the token isn't found, it would um, sometimes kind of hang around. And so the fix was just simply uh, cleaning things up with the URL, uh, making sure there were no curly braces in there. Um, and that's it for the last six months. Hi, everyone. So also just what's upcoming is the documentation strategy. Uh, of course, this, uh, this, this runs deep for me since I used to be the uPortal <laughs> coordinator. Um, so in this, what we really want to do is simplify things. Um, we're moving away from confluence. Uh, we want to kind of gather everything from the uPortal 4 manual to the uh, uPortal repo, the uPortal start repo. We kind of want to get that all together uh, so we don't have all these things lingering around. Um, we have been trying to move that into this repository, the uPortal project GitHub IO, um, as you can see right there. Um, and there's also some discussion about working towards getting a marketing website, which we'll kind of talk a little bit more about uh, with the steering committee. Uh, we want to be able to house all of this latest news and releases and the documentation in a more convenient strategic place. Um, but there is some more details about this strategy at the website below if you wanted uh, to take a peek at that. Thanks. Mm -hmm. So here's another look um, at our attic, the uPortal attic on what's retiring, what we're archiving. 
It is still accessible through the U portal um, attic space, that repo. Um, but for the time being, you know, we have this laid out on what's been retired over one year, the last 12 months with the functional test portlet, and the last six months with the weather portal uh, portlet, U portal home, and the U portal app framework. A lot of people, you know, aren't using the weather portlet. We also found that it had been broken anyway. Uh, the API that was being used a while back was no longer compatible. And I don't think anybody really was using it. So we do send that out to the uPortal um, user list to get a temperature of if whether or not people are still adopting that and everybody seemed to agree and approve to go ahead and retire that. So we, we went ahead and did that. Yep, uh, ePortal Home um, from UW Madison and ePortal App Framework, which is related to that, also were retired. Uh, the, it was in active development in the community space, but only by UW Madison themselves. Uh, I think they pulled a copy internal since nobody else had adopted it, and it's been years that they've tried uh, to gain some adoption. Um, so they've gone ahead and 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 um, helped. We moved it into the attic. And the rest are just kind of portlets that were created uh, that look like there might have been some interest, but nothing really took off. And it's been years and years uh, since anyone was, was interested. And then the last thing I would add to this is that we've moved some of the test portlets into the attic. Um, not the tests aren't useful. And we're, it's not that we're abandoning tests in general across the source code. Um, it's that uh, these tests are things like making sure that we meet JSR 168 um, specs. Well, it's been almost two decades. Yeah, we, we, we've nailed that. We're using the Apache Pluto engine to, to do that. So we're good there. Um, something uh, similarly, CAS proxy test, that is testing a very unique and distinct way to proxy CAS authentication back into portlet backends. Um, CAS adoption is is being replaced by Shibboleth and SAML2 and, and Azure. Uh, on top of that, I don't think anybody is really using that, um, that CAS proxying effort anymore. And we certainly don't need a test focused on that. Um, so we've kind of moved these things out since they're, they're not really applicable in um, modern uPortal. Okay, so you portal steering committee updates. So a few updates. Um, here's a few areas that we're concentrating on. Um, for the community, we are trying to do um, more com um, concentrated effort to do community outreach, uh, whether that's participation through events. Um, again, this is when uh, we've had discussions about a marketing website and starting to engage more in social media efforts. So with blog posts and um, getting more engagement with the community. Um, as far as development, uh, Benito and, and the community is working towards migrating portlets to web components and using lit instead of view, which he'll talk about more towards the end. And then also moving towards the latest Java and Spring versions. So we are looking at the long-term supporting versions of like, for example, I think it's Java 17. Um, so that's the development that we're focused on uh, right now. Cleanup, of course, we're always looking at ways to clean up the project by retiring unused portlets and again, organizing the documentation to make it easier for onboarding and uh, making things a lot more accessible. Um, so this rubric tool, uh, this is um, a tool that uh, Benito and I, we worked on um, on a project 
This rubric tool uh, that we built is a way to measure open source uh, maturity and sustainability. And so what's come out of this has been great because we've learned a lot on how we can take this into the uPortal project. What this rubric tool does is, um, again, it, it measures the current health, the maturity, it identifies areas of improvement and kind of helps us provide a better path towards, you know, building the community and um, sustaining it. Um, so there's some clear indicators that we were able to identify um, to, to make those improvements. And some of these I, metrics um, included five areas, um, included the community, um, the openness and diversity, codes of conduct, the governance model, how we manage and, and document um, roadmaps, the development um, and support and security and privacy. So these were the areas of concentration that we use to build out this tool, which we will be donating to the Aperio community and also using to um, measure against uPortal. Here's how we figured out how to grade. Um, this is the scoring uh, between emerging, established, and mature projects. So in the emerging, that's relatively a new project, a project that um, maybe doesn't have a community built around it yet. Um, so that could be, you know, a uh, open source project that, you know, you might build out of your university, your institution, um, and then taking it and transitioning it to the open source community, where it would then go to established and what that means and the cr criteria around that is relative to the number of contributors and how stable it is. You know, there might be a uh, little room for improvement, but there is some momentum uh, to build the community. And then we have the mature um, score, which is, you know, the project has most met most of that criteria, has an established community, a governance, funding. Um, there is, it is active. Um, there are adoptions and contributions being made. And so when we did measure out uPortal, um, we did fair as mature, but there were some clear indicators on what we need to work on for this project. And that would include onboarding, uh, support towards that, installation documentation, obviously some training efforts, privacy policies, and increase our number of contributors. So these are um, some of the major points that that we saw that we really need to to focus on. Yep, definitely. So Benito, did you want to talk about the roadmap? No. <laughs> but, okay, yeah, so the roadmap, um, we do have some targets. We've had them for a while. Um, uh, unfortunately, they've kind of been moving along in the past uh, year or so. Uh, but we've, like I said, we've we've finally have a, a a team. We've doubled in size here at Unicon, and we anticipate um, uh, we've got a couple hundred hours to dedicate to moving these. I'm working on um, web components right now and building out uh, uh, one under lit, and we'll get that effort moving in in earnest. The favorites API, I believe that's just about ready. It's been in a pull request for a while. There was just some last minute um, changes that keep coming up that we need to just uh, um, finish those up and then we'll get that done. So that definitely will will be uh, completed. With Java 11, that effort uh, looks like um, 
the coding changes were done, but there's been some issues around uh, login that's preventing us from testing. And the team really hasn't had time to jump back on this one, given some other priorities, but we're really close. We found that uh, other than adding a dependency for most of the portlets and U portal, there was very little code change. There was code change, I'll say that. We did need to make some adjustments uh, for Java 11, but almost everything, um, I would say like 90% of the changes uh, had to do with bringing in some dependencies that are no longer included in the standard JDK. Uh, but we'll still figure, uh, we're still figuring out the last bits, uh, but we're really close on that one. And the thing is, is what it looks like is once we get Java 11 done, being able to uh, use Java 17, the other uh, LTS um, for Java, shouldn't be nearly as big of a hurdle. We don't expect dependency changes or anything like that. Um, backwards compatibility is generally okay with Java. Um, so our, our fingers are crossed. We put it out to 2023 Q3, but we think that'll get pulled in quite a bit. For Q1, um, more work around web components, and hopefully we'll have the experience and the momentum going for us where we can start looking at converting portlets into web components. We really would like to move away from portlets. Uh, we're not going to give up support for them, but we certainly and see a, a future where web components and some servlets behind them uh, could completely re replace the portlets. Uh, there does need to be um, some consideration around the administration. The, the one advantage right now that portlets still have is that there's the portlet admin tool. You can go in, tweak configurations um, that dynamically update portlet. Um, but we're finding less and less need for that. And this won't be 100% conversion. We, we expect there will be some portlets that we will still retain, but anything that can be truly replaced with a web component, that's our goal. Uh, we also need to upgrade uh, uPortal to use Spring 5. Spring 6 is generally available now, just announced uh, this week. So we'll probably target that as well. The thing that holds us back from upgrading to the newer versions of Spring it has to do with the they drop support of portlets in Spring 5. Um, there, there is another community that has created um, some open source replacements for that, and uh, we'll probably leverage that. But again, we'll, we're eventually moving to a, a world where there is no portlets. Uh, speaking to Q2, uh, modernize and quick start is a, a big thing for us. It's really hard to demo uPortal and say, look, look how great this is when it, it really doesn't demo well. So we're going to clean that up, bring in some um, some more images and more examples of, of web components uh, with, um, if not real data behind them, at least um, some data that looks realistic. So certainly uh, a, a big effort. Um, but not insurmountable and should go quickly, uh, to be honest, once we get started. Um, and I believe that wraps up the roadmap. This is publicly available. Uh, there's a URL down there, uh, but you should be able to find it under the uh, uPortal project github.io repository. And if you would just want to know where it is and, and have trouble finding it, ask on the mailing list. All right, let's talk about community events. We really have just one to focus on today. Yeah. <laughs> so uPortal, the Dev Days 2023 is going to be in Las Vegas. So it's going to be exciting. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so we've been um, planning uh, for February 15th through the 17th. Uh, we wanted to stay clear of Super Bowl, and we also wanted to uh, stay clear from those beginning of the semester um, issues. <laughs> so we wanted to, to, to target February for that. Um, so 
expect to hear um, more details at the registration, the hotel. Uh, we will be doing a call for proposals. Um, we anticipate that this is going to be a hybrid session. Um, so we'll have scheduled presenters um, during the morning and then after lunch we'll have more of an unconference format of topics that are brought from the community. Um, so we are looking for presenters. So if you're interested, when the time comes and we do that call for proposals, we invite you to come showcase your portal or, or present a topic of your interest. That would be great. So we should be launching the website fairly soon, um, hopefully by the end of the month. But yeah, we're getting pretty close. Yeah, definitely. And, and we'll be there. Um, most of the, the Unicon team will be there and it'll be a great time for hands-on. Um, we'll, we'll be happy to assist anyone who brings some issues or future requests during the session, depending on how, how full uh, the schedule is. We expect to have a few hours at the end of each day to go around and help, help folks with their specific problems. You know, we can all work together and, and share together. Yeah. All right, we're cruising right along. Mm -hmm. So the last section is really just talking about lit web components. Um, this is just going to be real high level. So just as re a refresher, what are web components? Web components uh, really is a, a combination of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, leveraging some of the new technologies uh, that browsers provide. It includes templates, custom elements, Shadow DOM, and ES modules. And it's really the first time we can say, hey, we have a solution that could replace portlets. Um, talking about some of the challenges around uh, uPortal and front end code before is that, um, you know, we're trying to bring in, in in very isolated fashion um, different types of content that doesn't know about other content on the page. Uh, and so that's where the portal technology really helped. As we started writing JavaScript, um, you know, there's there's all this bleeding. The page would just see this big blob of JavaScript and you could uh, import the same framework multiple times and there could potentially be conflicts, especially if they weren't the exact same versions. Um, there, there's conflict uh, in the namespace. Like if you named your JavaScript function one thing and another library or custom code named it the exact same thing, there'd be a conflict. Uh, on top of that, um, uh, you know, identifying what uh, HTML to modify would also be a problem as well. Uh, so the namespace also extended into the HTML. So what web components, you know, kind of as a general classification, what it does is it leverages these four technologies. So templates is a nicety where you can define HTML inside of a template tag that isn't going to be rendered. And the expectation is you can grab that with JavaScript, uh, make some minor um, modifications, and then add it to the the DOM to the web page where you want. Custom elements is the way to name your little your blocks of, of code and put them in the page just like a tag. So it's a great way to compartmentalize things into just a, a simple name where you're passing in attributes and potentially content within the tag the custom tags. The Shadow DOM is where we really get the, it's really these next two, Shadow DOM and ES modules. It's where we get that isolation where we have a lot more um, reliability of not stepping on each other's toes and in independence on the page. And this is where things really have clicked for us. And really the only challenge we had was the lack of adoption of these standards by early browsers. But since IE 11 is no longer around, finally, you know, we've, we're fully engaged and are willing to adopt web components um, whole cloth. Um, so what does uh, lit bring to the table? The, the, the traditional approach, and it's hard, it's hard to use that word because web components haven't been around that long, but essentially you'd create um, your HTML that you wanted to use in these uh, template tags. Um, and so your JavaScript code would then go and grab that template by an ID, and then you would use JavaScript to update specific things within that piece of HTML, <clears throat> uh, 
and then you'd finally add it to the DOM. And so th I think the main benefit that lit brings is without bringing a lot of extra code, a lot of dependencies, um, which, which is an, a challenge I'll talk about here in a second, um, it really brings in just the simple idea that instead of using templates, you can use, um, as you look at line 19, I'm sorry, 10 right here, it uses this um, special preprocessor tag and you write your HTML, but you can use tokens um, that reference uh, attributes and properties of the custom element. Uh, it'll do some other things besides this. I just wanted to get a, an example that fit on the screen nicely. Um, you, of course, it could do list processing, some mapping, um, some other kinds of replacement. You can have create templates as a variable, an HTML template, and then add it um, so that you could aggregate a couple. There's a lot of flexibility there uh, without a lot of cost. So this is the advantage of lit is it, it gives you just that little bit extra. So you can do declarative HTML. And as that message in this example changes, um, it will efficiently like React does, it'll efficiently replace that piece of the DOM in the page for you without you having to do any assignments or anything. So that's the big advantage there. Uh, and and we're, we were using Vue a lot and we're now migrating to Lit. And the big reason is that while well, Vue does something very similar, um, it will actually take the templates and pre-process them uh, directly. In, in almost the same fashion as this without using this HTML uh, tag, which is nice, um, but it brings in a lot of dependencies. Uh, we've had some issues where they made some changes so that it broke all the um, all the web components that we had to go and, and make some updates to. And we've just, um, just struggled because the framework is getting big enough and they've kind of gone away from standard web components and are trying to do their own thing. Um, so with all the challenges, we thought we want to go back to something that's more basic, that gives us just enough to uh, make working on web components enjoyable without adding a bunch of dependency. Because our goal is to be able to write code in these little modules, replacing portlets, and have um, ind independence from other bits of code without building, um, bringing in just a ton of JavaScript. Um, which kind of feels like the case right now with Vue. So that's the direction we're heading. Um, and I'll go into more detail at Dev Days. We'll probably have at least one session on on Lit and potentially um, talk about Vue as well as in comparison. So any questions on that? Cool, we're, we're at 9.46. Um, kind of went through this uh, briefing just about right. So um, uh, that concludes our main presentations. If you have any questions, uh, now's the time to ask. So Benito, you're going to be presenting a workshop on Lit, right, during the Dev Days? Yeah, definitely a session, probably a workshop. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, one of the things that really helped facilitate the usage of Vue was that uh, at, at Dev Days, I think it was 2019, we had at Gilbert, Arizona at the Unicon office, um, we did a workshop that spanned two days where everybody in the room, I think it was about 15 of us, uh, we're, we're going through the documentation on how to create one from scratch, right? Just a basic web component uh, using Vue. And we were fortunate enough to have a big enough group that we ran into all kinds of corner cases. We documented that. We had one of our community members spend the night uh, writing a bunch of stuff, so really expanding our, our documentation. And that has been just phenomenal and a great way to spin folks up. So a lot of times in my web uh, component training, I'll refer to that documentation. I'll have that as a, if you can't follow along, you fall behind, or you want to bring somebody else on, here's here's the, here's the great documentation on creating web components. So we're hoping to do the same thing with Lit. Um, another, you know, 
another outcome like that, um, some kind of document to help uh, with the ePortal community would be phenomenal. That would be great. Cool. Okay, well, if there's no questions, we're gonna go ahead and wrap this up. We are recording this session. We'll put it out probably on YouTube. It'll take a few weeks, but we'll get that out and we'll have a blog post also summarizing our briefing. So thank you all for attending. We really appreciate it and um, have a great day.